Welcome to a new video on Trouble Television. Today I'm going to show you an approach how you can convert this SVG animation or any other basic SVG animation into a video file so you can actually use it on your website or your videos or whatever. Alright, so as a basic start, I just have an index HTML file here. Um, I just have my SVG element down here. It's a circle and an animate smill element on it um, that just draws and undraws the circle. In addition to the to those elements, I also define some CSS properties. So the SVG element stays in the middle of the page and doesn't scale in a weird way when the browser dimensions change, for example. Um, yeah. So. My approach was to think about how animation software actually splits up animation into uh, several frames. And those are basically then images that you can combine into video or, or GIF or whatever you want. And I thought actually it would be nice if one could do the same with an SVG animation. And as it turns out, you actually kind of can. Um, SVG exposes some functions via a JavaScript API that allow you, for example, to stop or pause the animations of an SVG element and set a current time. So basically show a specific frame within the whole animation. If you, for example, um, select the SVG element and pause animations, and set the current time to 1.5, you see the frame at 1.5 seconds of the overall animation duration uh, in a pause state. So you see just a frame of the animation. So it should be possible to progress through the animation with, with those two functions, right? So let's get started. Imagine we have a process animation function which takes an elemental argument. We also need, of course, a frame rate and the total duration. So we can calculate the total frames we actually want to create and um, the specific times when a new frame should be taken. Process animation takes the element, the frame rate and the total duration. So. At the beginning, we just want to pause all animations and rewind the animation basically to the starting point. So we start at the beginning or the begin at the start, you can figure it out. And after that, we won't have a loop that basically defines when a new frame is taken in a, in a kind of loopy way. Um, I'm going to use a set interval for this and going to explain why later. Let's say we want to uh, show a new frame every 220 milliseconds. That's about 10 frames of a browser, by the way. So first we need to calculate some things. The total frames is the total duration times the frame rate. The frame counter is zero. Um, and the time of the of a frame we can calculate by total duration divided by total frames time multiplied by the frame. So now we should be able to progress through the animation already. And we need to remember to increase the frame at every iteration. So let's see if it works. It does work. We are progressing through the animation at specific frame times. Um, but actually, we need to take care of two uh, exceptions, or rather one exception. If the animation, the current frame time, is past the total duration, we want to stop. Stop animation um, and 
and here we want to take a frame so now we are seeing we are progressing through the animation we have specific times that's why it's so laggy kind of um, and we have the points where we need to define something that allows us to basically create pictures right so this is kind of a tricky problem, I think, because naturally a browser doesn't allow you to take a picture, but does it? There is a project called Puppeteer. It's a it's a it's a project of Google. It is basically just a headless Chrome browser, and what do we see here? It allows to take a screenshot. Hmm, that sounds interesting. So how do we actually can achieve to combine those two functionalities well as it turns out puppety allows you to define your own methods and kind of works like a programmable browser where you can say it should should uh, call or visit um, a local html document and expose some functions to it and in those functions you for example can take a screenshot so let's get started to build the last part of the whole conversion process. To get started with Puppeteer, I just created um, basically a new script, convert.js I called it, and also added Puppeteer as a dev dependency, so uh, I actually can like put it on GitHub later or whatever, and don't miss the dependency. Um, what the basic script for now does is it initializes Puppeteer, initializes a, a new browser, the browser opens a new page. The page navigates to our index.html, takes a screenshot um, to example.png and closes the browser. So let's try it out. This created, yeah, it just a screenshot. Well, not really interesting. It's an empty page uh, because we navigate to our index.html, but we have our animation, uh, oh, sorry, uh, our animation.js um tell the animation of the svg to pause and to stop at zero so we just have an empty frame which is kind of the first frame of our animation already so let's uh, extend this script a little bit so we actually have the functionality we want important is that we also need to keep track of the frames so we also start with a frame counter and then we want to expose a function to the index.html and all related documented calls, of course, our animation.js, which is called take frame. Um, take frame also needs to be an async function because we are going to want to synchronously create the screenshot. The screenshot should be, hmm, let's think about it. Maybe we should create another folder. Um, so we have the frames all in one uh, location. And then let's create a path where we say we just want a frame, then we want frame number a string with pet start so we have like numbers like zero 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 one zero 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 two and and so on um, it's just more that you have like a real sequence uh, of files that is easily identifiable uh, let's say we want to pass in the path here we don't want to stop any more browser because we are dependent of our animation script. Should this be it? Let me check. Um, we create a path. Ah, no. We need one thing more. We need to increase the frame count, of course. All right. Now this should actually be all we need. So let's introduce the function in our animation script um, let's let's add another condition check beforehand take frame in window then we want to take a frame 
So let's try it out. And we're creating frames in the wrong directory, but nevertheless, we are creating them. And you also can see basically um, how the circle is already drawn. Um, let's delete them for now. Ah, oh, yeah, we should also say that we wanted to output. All right, now it should work as expected. And sure enough, we are now creating frames. Congratulations. And the frames are basically our animation. Now we just need one thing more. And that is that, is that we want to stop when we are done with the animation. So stop animation. I just copy pasting like the basic usage. Um, stop animation. And we're defining the stop animation page dot expose function stop animation this actually well let's just process exit with success all right now this should actually be everything we need so let's try it out We're converting it so uh, a notice maybe why it was important to use a set interval here well the documentation of Puppeteer states that taking a screenshot will at least take uh, one sixth of a second on macOS. So we need uh, something where we have a loop, but we also can um, like introduce a sleep kind of like a, a stop, a, a wait for the next frame. And set interval is basically the simplest thing you can do for such cases because you can say well i only want to execute then and then so actually that should be it right um it will just create new outputs we actually can look into the outputs and you see this is the whole animation so now you're wondering probably why uh is it just such a small image well this is also a setting you can change um, you can set on the page, you can set viewport and can change the width and the height of the page shown. So you can technically say you want to have, I think this is HD quality, I don't know. And if you now start a conversion process, the pictures are way bigger. To combine the whole uh, frames we just created, um, I just like constructed um, well, let me. I constructed uh, an ffmpg command where you basically say this is my input, where the input is all the frames we generated uh, within output, and as output we want to have the output uh, mov. Um, the important thing here is that we need to set a frame rate for the input. We need to say that. Well, we created 30 FPS, right? So we need to set the frame rate to 30. We say the input pictures are output frame, um, and then the 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 sequence number. Um, then add some video codec. I don't know. I don't know FMPG that well. I just like copy and paste commands whenever I need them. But if you do this, you create a MOV file that actually can be used um, just as a quick giveaway how to do something like that. On another note, it is also possible to render frames with a transparent background by setting this option to the emulation. Um, I can't really explain you this option. Um, I just uh, know what it is because I did it myself. But somehow it is possible to tell basically Puppeteer to emulate the browser or the page or the behavior or whatever um, with different default settings than uh, the, the default Chrome has. So default Chrome renders white background. So if you set uh, the RGBA option and set it to basically transparent um, and you try to render the frames again, I don't know if I can actually show it to you. Yeah, you see that it is transparent background. So this way it is also possible to render transparent background frames if you need such things. Thank you for watching. Uh, hopefully this will help you. Um, let me know if it helps you and 
I probably will add the complete animation at the end just to have like a demo how the quality is. Goodbye. See you next time.